Welcome to Divine Mercy Parish as we celebrate the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please join in our gathering hymn, Gather the People. Gather the people, enter the peace, all are invited, the greatest and least. The banquet is ready, now to be shared, join in the heavenly peace that God has prepared. Welcome to our celebration of Eucharist as we gather as God's people in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you. And with your spirit. Today's gospel ends our gospel of John's uh, for the past several weeks, but Jesus as our bread of life. So pay close attention to what happens in today's gospel. 
But we recognize Jesus as our bread of life gives us strength and nourishment to live our faith, but also offers us mercy and forgiveness to guide us in our faith. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. In Christ Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever, A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered together all the tribes of Israel at Shechem, summoning their elders, their leaders, their judges, and their officers. 
When they stood in ranks before God, Joshua addressed all the people. If it does not please you to serve the Lord, decide today whom you will serve. The gods your fathers served beyond the river or the gods of the Emirates in whose country you are now dwelling. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. But the people answered, far be it from us to forsake the Lord for the service of other gods. For it was the Lord, our God, who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt, out of a state of slavery. He performed those great miracles before our very eyes and protected us along our entire journey and among the peoples through whom we passed. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. and see the goodness of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. The Lord has eyes for the just and ears for their cry. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them. And from their distress, he rescues them. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit he saves. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Many are the troubles of the just one, but out of them all the Lord delivers him. He watches over all his bones. Not one of them shall be broken. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, live in love as Christ loved us. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word that he might present to himself the church in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, 
For no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the church. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to john Glory to you, o lord many of jesus disciples who were listening said this saying is hard who can accept it since jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this he said to them does this shock you what if you were to see the son of man ascending to where he was before is the spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the one who would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by my Father. As a result of this, Many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. You may recall that last weekend we celebrated the Feast of the Assumption, um, and the, so the re- Assumption readings um, superseded the ones that were set for the day had it not been uh, the Feast of the Assumption. So when today's Gospel opens, we're missing what, was in last, what would have been last Sunday's Gospel. Basically speaking, Jesus says in the previous Sunday's Gospel, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will have no life within you. So as we've heard over the past several weeks, Jesus takes this idea of the bread of life and begins making it more personal about himself. I am the bread of life. And then last weekend, he, he said in the, in the gospel, um, as I said, let you eat this, my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life within you. That's where today's gospel opens. And people in some ways are horrified by hearing that. They're not quite sure what he means. And, and so, some of them are turned off by what, what, what he says. As we hear them begin walking away, and it's, it's the gospel says, to return to the former way of life. In other words, they turn away from Jesus, his words of life, his words of mercy, his words of forgiveness, his words of love, and go back to where they were. In many ways, it's a regrettable uh, experience, but look what happens. As people walk away, probably in great numbers, Jesus turns to the 12 and says, what about you? What about you? As we hear Peter says, you have the words of eternal life. To whom shall we go? Peter and the, the disciples are convinced that Jesus 
um, is the Christ. They want to follow him even though his words are hard to hear, even though other people have walked away. They're going to stay because they believe he has the words of eternal life. This gospel, I think, really maybe challenges us in our own view of, of, of ourselves. Where do we stand with Jesus? Jesus says to us, I'm the bread of life. He says to us, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life within you. What is our response to that? Hopefully we embrace Jesus as does Peter and the disciples. The words of Jesus really uh, speak very clearly about who he is, but also about the gift of the Eucharist that we have. As you've heard me say before, we're celebrating the Archdiocese of Baltimore, the year of the Eucharist. And the reason we've had for the past several, several weekends really focused in on Eucharist and our call to see Jesus coming to us, the bread and wine become for us Christ's body and blood, to strengthen us and nourish us in our journey of life and especially in our journey of faith. But the question that Jesus asks of the, his disciples, he also asks of us. Do we want to go as well? Do we want to walk away? Hopefully a response is like Peter, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. You have the words of life. So Jesus, as our bread of life, comes to us, um, especially at, at, at Mass, comes to us in Eucharist to really give us life, to give us nourishment, to give us strength to live our faith. That our faith is lived and expressed because of Eucharist, because of Jesus, because of our faith. And the words of eternal life that Jesus speaks to us and promises to us at baptism and every time we gather in his name. So in today's gospel, we see people walk away from Jesus because he's saying to them, it's difficult for them to hear. Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life within you. Very tough words to hear in some respects. But if we understand what Jesus is saying by those words, he's saying to us, Eucharist gives us life. Eucharist gives us eternal life. Eucharist strengthens us in our journey of life today and every day. And Peter's response is, is incredible. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hopefully our response is the same to Jesus. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. So let's take some time this week to reflect on today's gospel which ends, by the way, as I mentioned earlier, our series on the bread of life. Um, so the past several weeks on these, series, these, these, these gospels have really challenged us in our faith and challenged us, hopefully, in how we see Eucharist, that Jesus comes to us himself to feed us with his body and blood, that the bread and wine become for us Christ's body and blood to strengthen us in our faith. But also, as I said before, uh, several weeks ago, in that faith is a call to express and live our faith. The energized and recommitted to our mission by Jesus, our bread of life, we go forth and proclaim the, the power of the Eucharist in our lives. Eucharist can, can transform us, hopefully it does, but the transformation means we go forth and we live our mission, we live our faith, we live our discipleship. So let's take some time this week to then to reflect on, on, on today's gospel and hear in our hearts the words that Jesus says, that, 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 that Peter says to Jesus over and over again. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Let's now pause for a few moments as a quiet time to open our hearts and spirits to this gospel and to the series of gospels we've heard for the past several weeks and recommit ourselves to Eucharist. Recommit ourselves to Jesus and respond with Peter. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and of earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was according to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, rose again on the third day, and according to the scriptures, he has sent into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, I look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord hears the cry of the just. Let us humbly ask for what we need. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we seek nourishment and sustenance in the frequent reception of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist, our bread of life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of Haiti who are suffering from earthquakes, storms, floods, dire poverty, and lack of responsible government leadership, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace and justice between the warring peoples of Afghanistan and for the safety of U.S. troops and personnel returning home, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection and blessings on all students and educators as they prepare for a new school year and face the demands and challenges of the COVID pandemic, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For relief for all who are suffering from wildfires, droughts, excessive heat, and severe storms in our country, and for the protection of all fire, police, and emergency personnel who respond to those in need, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the hungry, the poor and homeless, especially for those evicted from their homes that they find food and shelter, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those we love who are sick with mental and physical illness, and for those who have no one to pray for them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For departed loved ones and for those who remain to remember and grieve for them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the names and intentions written in our parish book of prayers, and for the intentions we hold now in the silence of our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intention of all parishioners from this Mass is offered, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we trust all of our cares to you. Help us to face the challenges of daily life with confidence in your love and protection. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A few announcements today. The next Farmer's Market at St. Peter's in Western Fort will be held on Monday, August 23rd, from 4 to 6 o'clock p.m. Catholic Campus Ministry of Frostburg State will be, begins again. The second collection next weekend and the fourth Sunday of every month is designated to support Catholic Campus Ministry at Frostburg State University. Your donations will support this important ministry and help our new young adult and campus minister, Sharon Bogus, build a strong Catholic presence that will serve the young adults at a time in their lives when many are searching and have questions about faith. We thank you in advance for your generosity. Religious education for children and youth will begin with a structured program this fall. We are considering, we are considering one in-person, family-centered meeting per month. We would like the input from all parents and guardians of school-aged children. 
including families whose children attend Bishop Walsh. Before we finalize our plans, please see the parish newsletter for more information on how to access a survey or call the parish office for help. Thank you. As our gifts are being prepared, please join in singing, We Remember. pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the, the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, good of all his holy church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, Bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. You lay the foundations of the world and erase the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image as the humanity of the whole world and all of its wonders to rule in your name over all that you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Jesus Christ. And so with all the angels, the angels we praise you as a joyful celebration, we acclaim. <laughs> Holy, O Lord, 
and all you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the power working of the Holy Spirit, you give, give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and to give you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice, give you thanks as he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. The sacrifice of a reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family here in summer before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all of your children scattered throughout our world, for our departed brothers and sisters, and under all pleasing to the passing from this life, give God admittance to your kingdom. That we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the peace and love of Jesus Christ be with each one of you. And with your spirit, let's take some time now and offer each other a sign of peace. Peace, Father, peace, peace. God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We now say our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive your body and blood at Mass, please give me the faith to know that you are always within me. Come into my heart today, and never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Please join in our communion hymn, Table of Plenty. Come to the feast of heaven and earth, come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. Oh, come and sit at my table saints and sinners are friends. I wait to welcome the lost and lonely to share the cup of my love. Come to the feast of heaven and earth. Come to the table of plenty. God will provide Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us so that all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us always, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This Mass is in here. Let's go forth in peace, always love, and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have a very blessed week. You too, Thank Father. you. Please <clears throat> join in singing our hymn, Lord of All Hopefulness. Swift to 